Hey everyone, long exposure photography is perhaps one of the most creative and customizable ways of shooting and doing this with a drone can produce entirely unique ways of capturing a scene. In this video, I'll show you the best ways to prepare and capture long exposure images with your drone and also some tips and tricks that go beyond the standard still long exposure shots. Let's jump right in. But first of all, what actually is long exposure photography? It's when the camera doesn't just capture a still image, instead it captures movement within the scene and then displays those moving objects as stretched out and blurred. The camera does this by using a much slower shutter speed to capture the image. Shutter speed is a key element of photography and it's the length of time that the camera takes to capture a single image. If you have a quicker shutter speed, like a hundredth of a second, the objects won't appear blurred. If you have a much slower shutter speed, like a whole second or even two seconds, there will be a lot of motion blur in your shot. Okay, now let's take a look at how we can change the shutter speed. So the drone is up in the air with an ND filter attached. In the DJI Fly app, in the bottom right corner of the screen, make sure you're flying in pro mode to be able to change the shooting parameters. Click on the values, and then you'll be able to drag the values under shutter to change the shutter speed. A higher value means a slower shutter speed in seconds, but if you're not sure which exact shutter speed to use, you can either press the auto button, which will give you an appropriate shutter speed to use, or you can use the live view to see whether the image is exposed correctly or needs adjusting. Then just press the capture button and the image will be saved to the album. As you'll notice, when I slow down the shutter speed, the image gets much brighter, eventually becoming completely overexposed, which brings me onto the next point, ND filters. As I've said in my other videos, ND filters are like sunglasses for your drone. They reduce the amount of light hitting the sensor in the camera, and the higher the number on them, the stronger they are. To achieve a slower shutter speed, you're going to need to get yourself some ND filters to counteract the overexposure from slowing down the shutter speed by darkening the image. I find that for night shots, ND16 is usually strong enough since it's already very dark, but during the day you'll most likely need to use a much stronger filter like ND1000 or even 2000, as I'm going to be using in this video. When shooting during the day, you most likely won't need to change the ISO value, which controls how sensitive the camera is to light. However, at night, you might find that the image is too dark, in which case changing the ISO can brighten the image without changing the shutter speed. Although, it is important to bear in mind that if you use very high ISO values, you risk creating a grainy effect in your image, which decreases quality. So, if you can, it's best to stay at ISO 100 or only just above 100 so you don't get that grainy effect. Here's a comparison between an image taken at night with the same shutter speed but different ISO values. Okay, now that we have the basics out of the way, we can move on to some general tips and best practices for shooting, and then on to some more advanced techniques when using long exposures. First of all, it's best to avoid shooting in strong wind, which makes the drone wobble when hovering. This is because any movements of the camera during shooting can be reflected in the captured image as a blur across the entire scene. There are two ways to go about this problem. First is the obvious one, and that's just to wait until the wind dies down before launching the drone. But there will be cases where this won't be possible, so to decrease the effect of the drone's movement on the image, you can try flying higher and further away from any distinct objects. The closer you are to the object you're trying to capture, the more the object will be blurred by the drone's movement. If you feel like the drone is very unstable while hovering and there isn't actually any strong wind, it might be a good idea to calibrate the drone's compass and IMU. I'll put a link in the description of this video to one of my other videos showing how you can calibrate all elements of the drone. Alright, so next, when shooting in any scenario, make sure you don't just take one image and then land the drone. It's a good idea to take multiple shots at slightly different parameters. Even if you think you've got the perfect shutter speed or the perfect ISO value, still take another shot at a slightly lower or slightly higher ISO or shutter speed. It just means that you'll have more choice when selecting the final image, and it's not that easy to see the finer details on the image on the controller screen. 
Also, make sure to play around with the composition of the image, so change the altitude of the drone or rotate it around slightly to try multiple different perspectives. Now, one of my favourite things to capture using long exposure photography is flowing water. Instead of capturing the water's individual splashes, the flowing water can almost seem silky and give a unique texture that almost makes it seem magical. There's nothing new in terms of shooting technique for this, but it's definitely worth experimenting with long exposures to capture flowing water. Another fantastic example is to capture moving vehicles on a road. This stretches out the lights across the road and looks completely different when done at day or night. You can even create a ghost effect which makes the cars look slightly transparent as they've moved across the road. Finally, as we've said before, motion blur from the drone's movement can introduce a blurry effect in the image which can make it seem less sharp. But what if I told you that the movement of the drone can be used to create entirely unique effects in the image? For example, let's take a look at a scene with objects close to the drone and also far away from the drone. If I actually fly the drone forwards and then press the capture button, the result is a really nice shot with a blur effect only in the foreground. You see, if you use the drone's movement in a controlled way while capturing a long exposure image, you'll be able to introduce unique effects into your shots. You can also try keeping a subject in the centre of the screen and then flying backwards while keeping that subject centred. Once again, the result blurs the foreground, but this time the subject stays in the centre and is visually distinct from its surroundings. Here's an example of this same technique done at night. The subject, in this case the M logo, stays sharp while the surroundings blur outwards. In darker conditions, the stretched out lights will provide a great contrast to the darkness. You can also experiment with how quickly the drone is flying while the image is being captured. If you fly the drone quicker, the image will be stretched more. Here's how the same scene turned out while the drone was flying backwards at a faster speed. As you can see, the lights were more stretched and distorted, so it's entirely in your control how you use the drone's movements to create this unique effect. So there we have it. Those were some tips and tricks for long exposure photography with your drone that can improve your results and also add a unique element to your images that will make your photos stand out from the rest. If you found this video interesting, then please let me know by clicking the thumbs up down below and as always, if you'd like to see more drone tutorials to help you get the most out of your drone flights, go and check out my channel. Well, that's it for today, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.